Minasan konnichiwa, this is David. Um, tonight I am doing a once over and review of the Seraphim wing effect part uh, for the real grade 1144 wing zero endless waltz edition. That is a whole bunch of words. <laughs> um, so, as you can see here, um, the Seraphim wing effect is actually a base for the wing zero custom. Uh, it holds it just like an action base would, but it has this elevated platform um, that has a little graphic on here um, to give it a little bit more emphasis. Now, I'm going to remove the Wing Zero. The Wing Zero actually connects with an adapter that is on the Wing Zero. Um, it's this little piece right here that mm. comes with the RG Wing Zero kit. Um, but this is a standard peg for a base. Um, so if you wanted to use it on another kit for whatever reason, you could. Like Bear Guy. Yeah, if you wanted to do a Bear Guy Endless Waltz Edition. I don't know. Uh, um, so this is your standard base. Um, it is screwed in um, two places. So it's super secure. Um, and it has numerous places for articulation and adjustment. Um, one thing that I think is kind of cool about this one is... It extends out pretty far, and if you put it downward, like so, um, or like so, I guess, you can actually put the wing zero out and forward quite a bit, um, which with this elevated platform is actually a kind of cool effect. It puts them low to the ground, um, but... It puts him low to the ground, but out forward. So he's actually in front of the plate instead of to the, um, above it. Yeah, very action pose. So he's coming right for you. Yeah, so if you have him like on top of a bookshelf or something, he's going to hang out from over it, which is kind of neat. Very 3D. Um, I mean, the frustration. 3D, 3D, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, the frustration that I ended up running into is that I was trying to pose him in the position that um, at the end of Endless Waltz, of course, the movie that this all comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, and he doesn't really do that pose very well, but that's not a problem with the base. That's a problem with the RG kit. Is that the emo wings thing? Um, it's, well, no, it's not the, the emo wings thing. It's the, um, the when the two cannons are together um, mm -hmm. and they're in front of him, um, like fused together. Uh, but you had that problem when you were just playing with the kit to begin with. Yeah, that's a problem with the kit, but that that's a shame because really this is made for that. Yeah. Um, so you can't really do that, and that sucks, um, but that's a fault of the RG. Um, really, the problem is is that the, the only way that you can do that is with the RG-style hands, which aren't able to really hold the gun. I even tried gluing it. wasn't really going to work, mm. so that's a shame. So anyway, back to the base. Um, the base has these lovely... Um, lovely plastic feathers. Mm -hmm. They are slightly pearlescent, translucent effect feathers. Yeah. Um, and they're on um, little toggles. Uh, they can they can go um, 360 degrees around that post. Mm. Um, and they can also, they're on a ball joint as well. So you can put them in pretty much any configuration that you want as long as it is along these long swirly pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty nice. And you also have a total of, um, what, seven different configurations for those um, if you have the base on because it has all these little spots like oh, this. Oh, so these can go in any of these little Yeah, spots. they'll go anywhere in there. Okay. Um, also, the posts that hold up the base, um, they'll actually be, you can store them underneath it if you want. Mm. Um, if there's, you want flat. Yeah, if you want it flat. There's also two of them um, that will make it shorter um, so mm. it's not at such an incline. Mm. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, this, um, the graphics piece, is actually two pieces. It is a clear plastic piece um, that protects it, um, like a screen protector, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then this piece, it's actually kind of hard to get out. Um, it's much more rigid than it looks. Um, it's like a postcard, basically. And it has this feather effect with a sort of a nebula look in the background. And then it has this lovely placard with, um, you know, clouds with uh, sunlight coming through it um, and the name of the thing for display purposes. Mm. Um, I'll put it back in with that configuration just to show you what it looks like. Um, I think it's kind of lovely, but it, both of them are really great. Um, the only, I, I don't really, I think this one's a little dissonant. 
um, because it's showing you um, it's showing you clouds from in, inside of a planet, and the wing zero is really not made for <laughs> ground use. So you said there were four of these pole pieces in the back. Correct. So you could actually put the whole thing up on the shorter ones. Yeah, you, or or halfway um, on the shorter ones. Um, of course, I left them in the other room, so it could be at about this angle instead. And then you could put a light under it or something. Yeah, you could definitely put a light under it. Um, and it is it is semi-transparent, so if you put a light under it, it would be somewhat visible. Uh, and I think that, honestly, if you, if you look at the bottom, this is just some clear um, ABS plastic. So if you wanted to cut out the bottom of it to mm -hmm. install an LED, it would be really easy. Yeah. Bandai even went out of their way to make that easy uh, because these pieces right here, you could just cut them off with a hobby knife mm -hmm. and they're nice little cylinders that you could install an LED into. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's intentional. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Bandai thinks like that sometimes. So it's a great base. Uh, it is... It was a little expensive for what it was. I mean, it's like, you know, it was 16, 1600 yen, I think. Um, so not very much, actually. Uh, but the the regular action bases are like 500 yen. So when compared to those, it is a little much. But they don't have pretty... They don't have all things. of this pretty stuff. No, it's it's a little much, but, you know, it, it it's a great display piece for the Wing Zero. <coughs> yeah. Um... And these kits, the the wing kits, really haven't gotten a lot of attention um, in a while. Um, the the I think this is actually it's the the detail is really wonderful. Um, it's reminiscent of the PG Wing Zero Custom, um, which is of course one of the most popular PG kits, if not the most popular. Mm. Um, and with this base, it's really nice. Um, and like well, like I was saying with the the Buster rifle, mm -hmm. um, it couldn't hold them in the center. Mm -hmm. Also, the um, the dry Zwerg pieces, um, the bonuses that came with um, Gundam Ace magazine, mm -hmm. um, you can't really configure the Wing Zero in any realistic way with those. Oh. Um, they are too heavy for his hands. Oh. Um, those pieces usually come with a stand. Um, and the stand is all well and good, but it can only hold it up at a 180 or sorry, 90 degree angle, mm -hmm. um, just perpendicular to the ground. So you couldn't even really use these extra little. No, pillars. there's no way you could do that. It would have the the stand is about this tall. Mm -hmm. It's made for whenever the wing zero is standing up. Mm -hmm. um, so if you tried to put the stand up here, there's just no way to, no realistic way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's unfortunate because I really like that gun. Mm. Um, I tried a few different ways to, to configure it and it, it's just, it's way too heavy. It needs the support. Mm. Um, I wonder if you could custom rig yourself something using these. Yeah. Models. Well, I think that what you would really want to do if you wanted to put the Dreiselberg um, buster on there is you would really want to use like a clear plastic support or you, uh, if you just wanted to say fuck it and go all the way, um, use some hard wiring and wire hard the wire arms. the arms uh, and the wrists. Um, we should experiment with that and do a tutorial or something. Yeah, we may do so because this, it's a beautiful kit. It's just those hands, it, it, wing, the wing it's designs. It's delicate. Yeah, it, he's too delicate for the stuff he's carrying, which is one of the problem with the wing designs. Um, they're very, they're very much like anime. <coughs> they're very much like anime characters mm. as opposed to um, you know real robots or whatever. So they are a little bit unrealistic whenever you put them into model kits, um, which is a shame. But you know, I I think this is lovely. Mm. I, I love the coloration. Mm. I love the way that it. Um, I love the way that it stands on this. Um, it definitely adds a lot of gravity. Uh, I, those wings are beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the feathers are great. So there you go. Um, and as I said in the unboxing of this video, um, you can't really get this on through normal channels now. Um, yeah, go It was um, it was a limited edition thing. You had to order it from Premium Bandai. You might still be able to get it through like Hobby Link um, or eBay. some or eBay or some import services. Um, who were smart enough to order a whole bunch of them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But really, this is, um, it's a great, 
great little exclusive. I love it. And hey, if you do check that out and you do find locations where it's being sold, legally, yeah. go ahead and drop it in the comment boxes for anybody else who might be interested. Absolutely, absolutely. Please do so. Let's I know there's going to be people who want to pick this one up. Mm. Um, so if you like our videos, please like, subscribe, drop a comment, um, say hey. Uh, we do take requests. Yep. And we've been doing some videos lately where we've been talking about some topics. We have um, a series of videos talking about G Gundam. And we just uploaded one, um, a longer video where Philomena and I are talking about the women of Gundam um, and the feminist significance of the star winning Gundam. So it's a weird little deconstruction. And we would love to do other deconstructions of Gundam series. So drop us a line. Let us know if you'd like us to talk about things. And um, matane, everyone. Matane.